I think people might have the wrong idea about Yukiko. While the Chie video was well received, I didn't think I needed to justify why I like one of the already most well liked characters in Persona 4. There are other characters that are very much worth talking about, and if my other two videos didn't already give it away, Persona 4 is one of my all time favorite games. I'd even argue it's one of the most important games of this generation. Persona 4's core message is still relevant to this day, and its characters and story have stood the test of time. So to that end, I'd like to clear up some common misconceptions about Yukiko Amagi, arguably one of the most misunderstood characters in the game. Yes, even more than Naoto, and that's a hornet's nest I am not yet ready to stick my hand into. At least based on comments from fans, I find Yukiko to be a polarizing character. People who like her really like her, and people who don't like her very actively dislike her. Or maybe it's just Pat's fault. Be What's safe. Yuki though? I don't even know if that's food. It's a dumb bitch that doesn't want to inherit her family's end. Either way, I'd like to take this opportunity to clear up some misconceptions about Yukiko and to try to give a reading to better help understand her character. Like handing you a pair of glasses to help you see past all the fog that's been building up around her over the years. Let's start from the top. Yukiko Amagi is an ordinary teenage girl from the rural town of Yaso Inaba. She is demure, homely, and delicate, and also somewhat withdrawn and distant from everyone except her best friend Chie. She's also regarded by most as extremely attractive, often drawing attention from boys and confessions from complete strangers. Her family owns the Amagi Inn, an old and prestigious inn that's largely seen as the only cultural landmark in middle-of-nowhere Yaso Inaba. Yukiko works part-time at the inn, and as the only daughter of the family, is expected to inherit the inn when she is old enough. As a result, Yukiko is a girl with a lot of expectations pushed onto her, not only as the inheritor of the inn, but also as this untouchable, delicate flower to be admired from afar. When she is thrown into the TV world, the Midnight Channel reveals her inner feelings. She sees herself as a princess trapped in a castle, awaiting a prince to take her far away. It's only after her shadow is defeated that Yukiko must come to terms with her frustrations and accept the parts of herself that she has tried to lock inside. As a result, she begins to open up and shows herself to be a genuinely kind and cheerful girl. In her social link, she asks the player for help to improve her comically bad cooking as a part of an effort to become more independent and eventually leave Yasu Inaba to pursue a career of her own and leave the inn behind. By the end, Yukiko decides not to leave town and continue as the inheritor of the inn. In the most negative light, one could interpret this as Yukiko regressing in her character arc. She wanted freedom, but then chose to stay behind and accept a fate that was forced onto her. The game even goes out of its way to show how much Yukiko's responsibilities at the inn begin to crash into her school life and her personal plans for the future. She would appear to most to be indecisive and defeatist, resigning to a future that was decided for her by everyone around her instead of claiming the independence and freedom she desired. And all things considered, I can sort of see where this take might have come from. Here in America, the high school story is more about the rite of passage on the road to adulthood. Leaving home and going to college is seen as a step towards claiming your independence and freedom as an adult, something Yukiko herself even set out to do. So by staying at the inn, Yukiko could be seen as giving up her future. But I think that's gravely misinterpreting pretty much everything about Yukiko. And I do mean everything, her imagery, symbolism, and chosen mythology included. Before we start breaking down the subtext, we should go over the... uh... over text? If we go by Yukiko's own admittance, she says she wants to be independent and pursue a career in college, to be free of the inn. This lines up with what we see of Yukiko's shadow, a princess trapped in a castle, and in her boss form, a bird trapped in a cage. And if her shadow says it, it must be true, right? It's all there in the imagery. Princesses in castles and birds in cages are the most obtuse symbolisms for I'm trapped. But take a closer look at that shadow design. 
It's a bird in a cage, but the door is open. She could leave anytime she wants, but she doesn't. She's not actually trapped. The cage is all in her head. Yukiko has convinced herself that everyone around her is forcing expectations onto her, but by the end of her social link, you learn that everybody at the inn, from her parents to the staff, all support her and whatever she chooses to do, even if she chooses to leave and go to college. Yukiko learns by the end that the people she thought were deciding her fate were actually the people who cared about her the most, and she learns to see the truth beyond the fog created by her own mind. It's also important to remember the arcana associated with Yukiko, the High Priestess. This card represents intuition, instinct, the subconscious mind, veiled knowledge, and most importantly, the wisdom to make choices. And while it might sound like none of these words describe Yukiko, I like to think that characters in Persona are made to grow into their arcana, and that their journey is about discovering these positive traits within themselves. In fact, you could say that the opposite might be true as well, that every character begins their story with their cards inverted, something that is reflected by each character's shadow before they eventually learn to accept themselves. At the start of the story, Yukiko is withdrawn, aloof, and indecisive. She simply does what she's told or what's expected of her, convinced that she's trapped by all of these expectations. It's important to distinguish that Yukiko's shadow doesn't want to be free. She wants someone to take her away. Rather than listen to the voices of those who support her, Yukiko instead retreats into a lie that she's convinced herself of wishing for someone to make the difficult decisions for her. These are traits of the High Priestess inverted. Ignorance, isolated thoughts, and inability to make choices. It's only when Yukiko acknowledges her weakness and finds the resolve to make her own decisions that she accepts her shadow and awakens to her persona. At the end of her social link, she doesn't just give up and go back to the inn, she makes the conscious decision to stay behind and do good by the people who care about her. The willingness to make choices versus the fear of its responsibility and burden. Two sides of the same card. There's also an important parallel between Yukiko and the mythology represented by her persona, but I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know anything about Japanese mythology. And neither do I. So instead, you'll just have to deal with my disgustingly oversimplified reading of how the original myths relate to Persona 4. Yukiko's persona is Konohana Sakuya, or more formally known as Konohana Sakuya Hime, patron deity of Mount Fuji and goddess of natural life, cherry blossoms, and volcanoes. She was wed to the god Ninigi, but was found pregnant with child only a single night after their wedding. Inigi accused Konohana Sakuya of infidelity, and she got so offended that she locked herself inside a hut and set fire to it, declaring that the child would not be harmed by the fire if they were truly his. Which sort of explains why Yukiko has fire magic. Yukiko's evolved persona is Amaterasu, goddess of the sun. There are many myths about Amaterasu, but the most famous one is also probably the most relevant here. Amaterasu decides to lock herself in a cave, upset with Susano because he, um... He skinned alive her favorite horse, hurled its bloody carcass into her weaving room, and then shat on her cushion? Susano was a dick! Yosuke, what the fuck? Putting aside how weird Japanese mythology gets at times, the important distinction to make is that both Konohana Sakuya and Amaterasu shut themselves away from the world, in prisons of their own making. In the case of Amaterasu, it took the rejoicing voices of 800 other gods to catch her attention and show her that she was beloved and that the world was darker in her absence. The parallels here are unmistakable. These aren't stories of goddesses who were trapped and desired freedom, these are goddesses who retreated into their own grief. If you misunderstood Yukiko as a spineless, indecisive girl who threw away her future, then I don't completely blame you. Persona games are special because we view them through our own cultural lens and life experiences. But the problem of having this cultural lens means we start framing the story and characters with our own expectations, 
and find ourselves trying to outsmart the story because it doesn't fit into a mold that we've forced onto it. In a way, it's no different from seeing Yukiko through the TV and only seeing what you expect to see, rather than seeing the truth. Which is painfully ironic, all things considered. Or maybe it's just Pat's fault. Yukiko didn't regress in her story, she just opened her eyes and recognized that everything she needed was around her all along. And sometimes things aren't as bad as we tell ourselves. Sometimes we just need to get out of our heads and see things as they actually are. That's all for today's avatorial. Hopefully I've managed to change at least a few minds about Yukiko. Don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment with your thoughts. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more anime and game content from Sugar Punch. The world still sucks right now, and we're really grateful for any support we get through our Patreon, so be sure to check it out and feel free to pitch your support for early access to all of our latest videos. I'm ABI, and I'll see you next time.